So look at this. Here are three different, these are output curves. You, know, you can measure two kinds of curves, gain and output. And we'll show you the difference between This is the actual output. So you notice that this scale goes from 60, it could go from zero, but it doesn't have to in this case. It goes from 60 to 120 dB SPL. All right? It's just measuring the output of the hearing aid in the ear. Okay? Uh, and these four curves, the, the hearing aid is set the same on all four curves. You might have think, oh, I turned the hearing aid up. No. Uh, oh, I used a, a louder signal. No. Same intensity signal, 70 dB. Right? Just three different, four different types of signals. So the hearing aid is set the same, and the intensity is the same for all four of these. But the hearing aid is producing four different outputs that are drastically different. This one is, this one is a pure tone. Uh, this one is speech wave and pure tone. This is speech itself. And then this one is composite noise. A composite noise is a broadband noise. In other words, it's not frequency specific. It's a wide range of frequencies. Uh, and uh, usually it's done by taking a whole bunch of pure tones, like 60 to 120 pure tones, and maybe modulating them a little bit, like a warble tone is, and meshing them together. And they call that a composite, uh, right, composite noise. And so, but you see the difference. And why is the difference? Because this is a digital hearing aid. It wouldn't happen on a linear hearing aid. A linear hearing aid does the same no matter what you put into it. But a digital hearing aid treats different kinds of sounds differently. So it processes speech different than it processes a pure tone or a composite noise or a vacuum cleaner. You know? um, because we could actually say today, the hearing aid companies, they'll come in here and they'll tell you, our hearing aid is so sophisticated that it analyzes everything that comes into it, all sound. It, it determines what is speech, and then it, it, it um, uh, when, when it determines that, that the input is speech, then it gives that the, the proper amplification, the proper compression, the proper emphasis, frequency response, etc., etc. Uh, it, it does everything it can do to enhance the speech. But when it hears something that is not speech, then it reduces it. That's noise reduction. So it gives you the best possible signal-to-noise ratio, the difference between the noise, background noise and the actual speech. Okay? Well, that's good. But today, you can say that. If you said that 20 years ago, that, you know, you could, you could get a fine. You put out of business by the FDA for false advertising because it couldn't be done. But today it can be done, and we can see that four different signals are at the same level are processed four different ways. So which one would we use? In the past, we used to use pure tones that swept from low frequencies through high frequencies as a test signal to fit a hearing aid. Um, or we used a composite noise. Well, which would be correct? Neither one of them. Because what's really correct is speech, since that's what we're trying to make audible and intelligible and comfortable for. We don't care about pure tones. They could be, as far as we're concerned, they could be attenuated like noise by the hearing aid. Uh, okay. So here's a, a different hearing aid circuit doing the same thing, treating all four of these signals, though they're all the same level, uh, quite a bit differently. And look at this one. Here, with a pure tone, this particular thing, which was uh, uh, a particular digital hearing aid, okay, as soon as that got to 2,000 hertz, boom, the output dropped to almost nothing, you know? Uh, now, that didn't happen with speech. It didn't happen with composite noise. But, but when they used a pure tone, this happened. That's crazy. You know why? It, the, the, the circuit thought the hearing aid was going into, into feedback. And so it, it cut the output way down because it had that type of feedback suppression. 
nobody does that anymore. But I, the reason I showed you these three slides is just to, to make the point that the signal you use to fit the hearing aid has got to be speech. That's why visible speech mapping. Uh, the others are inappropriate. Uh, and so that's why speech is recommended and visible speech mapping, mapping is recommended because it is the most important input signal that the patient will want to hear, hear well and hear comfortably. Okay. And speech is processed different than the other signals because speech is very complex, much more complex than other noises. Uh, it, it quickly shifts from low frequencies to high frequencies. Um, it's, got, it's, it's modulated. There are spaces of quiet in between syllables, words, and sentences. Uh, it's, it's very, very complex. And when a hearing aid has multiple channels of, of compressors and things like that, the speech is, is actually engaging multiple um, bands, multiple channels, all at the same time and in various ways different intensities, different frequencies. Where a pure tone that's sweeping doesn't do that, it's engaging just one, uh, one channel or one octave or, or part of an octave at a time as it sweeps from low frequencies to high frequencies. So it's very much different what the way the hearing aid has to handle and process speech than any other kind of, of input. Right? That's why we have to use speech. Okay? And we also have to make measurements at more than one intensity. We can't make measurements just at 70 dB, 60 dB, 50 dB, 90 dB, all of these levels that we used before. We actually have to use something that, that is very much like soft speech, and then average converse speech, and then loud speech, or loud sounds. That loud environmental sounds, uh, so that when uh, when speech is relatively quiet, when the background noise might exceed it, the person will still be able to understand it. When it is average, like I'm speaking now, and it's about 65 dB at at whatever position you're in, then of course it's very comfortable to them. And that loud sounds, when they go, go and leave here and go to the factory to their jobs, aren't so loud that, that the person can't wear the hearing aid in that environment. Right? We have to make soft speech audible, average speech comfortable, and keep loud sounds from being uncomfortable. That's the goal of anything. Right? Okay. So it's important for us to um, use a speech signal as a stimulus type, uh, and to use several levels representing soft, average, and loud, right? and to make the, uh, make the measurement uh, in the ear, at the eardrum level. Okay? We're verifying audibility, and that's the best process. Okay? All right, so this is the screen that you've seen of the Verifit. And this is called an SPLogram. Okay? And this axis, um, the vertical axis, um, is SPL, sound pressure level, in dB from minus 10 dB to plus 140 dB. Okay? From inaudible to loud as a jet plane taking off in front of it. Okay? The whole range of, of sound levels. And this line down here, this dotted line at it represents the threshold of normal hearing in SPL. What would it be and where would it be if we were making the measurements in HL? Zero dB. Zero dB, right, very good. Yeah, this would be zero on an audiogram. These are the levels of sound that are the thresholds of a normal hearing person, right? This is the patient's uh, audiogram. So um, this area 
is not audible to this patient. Anything under here is not audible to this patient because these are his thresholds. These are normal thresholds. You know? So these things under here are not audible to someone with normal hearing. This would be perfectly audible to them, but it's not audible to this patient because his hearing level is here. And then these plus signs are targets. We want to make the average speech not just audible, but comfortable, you know, which is about 10 dB at least, 10, 15 dB above threshold, right? And then these are the UCLs, uncomfortable loudness levels, all right? So we want to make sure that loud sounds don't exceed those. We're going to take speech and put it up here. It's normally going to be down here. I'm going to put it up here, okay? So this will show. Uh, all right, that's normal hearing down there. There's the patient's thresholds. These are the maximum output targets. It's actually the UC UCLs, right? We don't want to exceed that. Um, so this area in here that we just shaded in, that's the usable area, all right? We have to put speech, which is down here, if it's unamplified, we have to provide the proper amount of amplification um, to put it up there. Right? And we might have to compress it. You know, a lot of times, hearing losses aren't flat like this. A lot of times, hearing losses are greatest at the high frequencies, more often than not. And so you might have a very, very uh, small range of audibility. You know, for a normal person, this is their range of audibility. They hear it when it's this, when it's this soft, and they can stand it until it's this high. But now this patient has a reduced area of audibility. Still not bad, but others will have a, a very reduced area of audibility. You have to make it this high just to be audible, and you go 10 dB higher, and now it's too loud. Okay. Uh, and so that's where compression comes in. And on these instruments, you'll even see the compression. Speech is normally about 30 dB wide from peak to valley. When it's compressed, you'll see that uh, the hearing aid could, could shift that down so it's only 10 dB wide from peak to valley. You know, the peaks are the words with, with, with accents on them. The valleys are words without accents and uh, the softer parts of, of speech. I'll show you that one around. So we would like soft speech to end up about here. Uh, you know, it's, it's still soft, so we just need it to be barely audible. So at or slightly above the threshold is where soft speech should be. Should be. What's that 50, 55 dB? Someone is speaking soft. And we want average speech, 65 dB, to be sufficiently above the threshold where it's comfortable. And we loud speech, these would be the peaks of speech, maybe speech that's 70 dB, 75, want that to be uh, loud, yes, it's loud, uh, but it's nowhere near the UCLs, and loud environmental noises shouldn't be above the UCLs either, okay? And maybe just below them. You'll see this when we run it here again. Okay, um, so these things are designed so that the patient can understand this. Um, some patients you can't explain that to. New pediatric, pediatric fittings, you might explain that to the parent, but you can't explain it to the patient. And some other patients just don't have the capacity to understand this. Um, but for those who do, this is a very big uh, counseling tool, not only for uh, uh, showing benefit that there's a sales aspect, but there's also a counseling aspect. Let them know what is realistic. Uh, adjust their expectations to be appropriate, you know? Uh, okay, so these things are designed so that they're easy to use uh, and they give you an excellent counseling tool because the patient can understand them as well, right? And they make for successful fittings where a patient is happy, uh, but not only happy, they're getting the, the maximum benefit. Uh, 